Well, let's start off this message today with our main foundation stone. We start every message with the foundation stone. Rabbi Neil came up with that, oh, 15 years ago, and, and it's so, uh, uh, so powerful. Read along with me. All of our messages are based on the Bible, which is an accurate and truthful account of God and his interaction with mankind. If you don't believe this first and foremost, then nothing else matters. If you're not sure of your salvation, then nothing else matters, right? So my message today is uh, going to be one that I believe is going to bless you. It's called Secure the Victory and Follow the Battle Plan of Adonai. And you're going to see, no matter what you're going through, how you can secure your victory today. Amen. Can you hear me? So we all probably know the story of uh, Yehoshua of Joshua in the Battle of Jericho, right? You all heard that story before? You know, children love to hear this story, and they love to sing that little song. Joshua fought the Battle of Jericho, Jericho, Jericho. Joshua fought the Battle of Jericho, and the walls came tumbling down. You got to sing it with me. Ready? Joshua fought the battle of Jericho. Where Jericho? Where Jericho? Joshua fought the battle of Jericho, and the walls came tumbling down. Ha ha! Hallelujah! I'm believing your walls are going to come tumbling down today too. You know, our son Joshua, who's 31 years old, I used to sing this song a lot to him, maybe a couple of million times. And he was a little rambunctious as a child. So sometimes the walls did come tumbling down. Mommy would come in and say, what happened? (laughs) But let me assure you something, that this story, just like the story of Jonah, remember we talked about Jonah and the Ninevites a couple weeks ago. Just like that story, this is not just a fancy children's Bible story. We can learn so much from Joshua's battle with Jericho that we can use to fight our own battles every single day and to secure our very own victories. So first let me start out by reviewing one of the stories I heard about one of the great uh, heroes of World War one. And I was going to ask if any of you remember him, but then I was thinking, we're one. That's probably 103 years ago. The only one close to that uh, (laughs) would be Dorothy right now, but uh, even then she probably would have heard it as a story. Some of you may have heard of Sergeant Elvin York before. Okay, so he was one of the most famous soldiers in World War I. But people don't realize that he was a very unlikely guy to become a legendary war hero. Sergeant York felt that his belief in Yeshua stopped him from killing anybody, even in wartime. So Sergeant York felt, uh, after being drafted, he went home on a 10-day leave. I believe it was like 1914. And he studied scriptures day and night uh, from a captain who was a believer that had shared the gospel message with him. And finally then, in a real test of faith, Adonai showed York that he could obey God and he could defend the helpless people in Europe at the same time. And York wrote, as I prayed there alone, I knew that God was there. He understood that I didn't want to be a fighter or a killing man. God took pity on me. He gave me then the assurance that I needed. It was his will. And that was enough for me, he said. You know, I think he took up 
took out 25 uh, Germans in a sniper nest that was taking out all of his, uh, all of his soldiers, and he did it single-handedly, and they captured 35 uh, prisoners, and uh, he did it like almost single-handedly. It's an incredible story. It was his will, and that was enough for me. You know, Sergeant York had to first win the war in his mind before he could ever win the battle that was ahead of him in the trenches of France. I think the same thing is true about Joshua. And I think the same thing is true about us today. So let's go into this story. Let's dig a little deeper into Joshua's story. And let's see what lessons we can learn today. The first lesson is the battle is won by remembering who is in command. So after getting the report of the two spies, uh, getting the troops ready for battle and crossing the Yardanit, the Jordan River, Joshua knew that he needed to get ready himself. So he went to survey the land around Jericho, probably to make a great battle plan. He probably didn't know what he was going to do because it was a fortified city that nobody's ever come against. And that's where he met a man with a sword in his hand. So let's go to Joshua 5, verse 13. And now it came about when Joshua was by Jericho, he raised his eyes and looked. And behold, a man was standing opposite him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went to him and said to him, are you for us or for our enemies. And so when we see it say he lifted up his eyes and looked and behold, it seems like he was surprised. You know, I think it was pretty smart that Joshua himself didn't draw his sword right away, probably because if this guy was looking for a fight with his sword drawn, he would have already attacked him. Instead, Joshua asked the man, are you for us or for our enemies? In other words, are you friend or foe? Are you with us or for against us? And I don't want you to miss the man's response. The next verse, verse 14, he said, No, rather I have come now as captain of the army of the Lord. And Joshua fell on his face to the ground and bowed down and said to him, What has my Lord to say? to his servant. His response was not what Joshua expected when he said he wasn't friend or foe. Listen, I believe that it was Yeshua. Some people think it might have been the angel Gabriel who was a captain of the army. But I'll tell you why I believe it was Yeshua. It's called a Christophany, a manifestation of the pre-incarnate Yeshua, like the light in Genesis 1 verse 3, like the one who was in the, uh, the fire with Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. When Adonai's army walks onto the scene, he doesn't come to take sides. He comes to take over. Can I hear an amen? We don't need to ask if Adonai is on our side because we know he is. We need to make sure that we are on his side, and that's what really matters. Are we on Adonai's side, or are we working against him. So it's so important as we face many battles, spiritually, emotionally, physically, that we make sure that we are on his side in every situation. We need to remember that Israel once tried to take Canaan with their own power. And 40 years earlier, Moses told the Israelites that the consequence of their unbelief, when they got the report of the spies, was that they would wander in the wilderness for 40 years. And the very next morning, the Israelites got up, and they decided that they came in without asking God or without bringing him with them. So let's go to Bemid Bar Numbers in chapter 14, verses 40 through 45, and read about that. In the morning, however, they got up early and went up to the ridge of the hill country, saying, here we are. And we will go up to the place which the Lord has promised, for we have sinned. But Moses said, why then are you violating the command of the Lord? When doing so, will not succeed. Do not go up, for the Lord is not among you to prevent you from being defeated by your enemies. 
For the Amalekites and the Canaanites will be there to confront you, and you will fall by the sword, since you have turned back from following the Lord. And the Lord will not be with you. But they foolishly dared to go up to the ridge of the hill country. Neither the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord nor Moses left the camp. Then the Amalekites and the Canaanites who lived in that hill country came down, and they struck them, and they scattered them as far as Hormah. You know, going into battle without the Lord is just setting yourself up for defeat. And we all can attest and testify that when we try to do things on our own without asking the Lord, most of the time they don't work. Let's look at verse 14. The man told Joshua who he was in verse 14. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and bowed down and said to him, what has my Lord to say to his servant? And then in verse 15, the captain of the Lord's host said to Joshua, remove your sandals from your feet for the place where you are standing is holy. And Joshua did so. You know, Joshua felt the very presence and power of Adonai. In shock and amazement, he threw himself down face first before the Lord. Joshua knew that this man had a message from Adonai and he wanted to hear it. You know, we know that this was from Adonai because first of all, this guy allows Joshua to get face down before him and call him Lord. We also see Joshua is told, remove your sandals because he was right there on holy ground. Just like Moses was told in the burning bush, remember? And now we're not specifically told what the message is, but we can assume that it was probably something about the details maybe of the Lord going before him, the battle plans that were going to be laid out. But the biggest point of this meeting was with the commander-in-chief of the Lord's army is that Israel will not be fighting this battle alone. And now when we get to Joshua chapter 6, in the very first verse, we get a look into the scene that was going on in Jericho at the time. You know, Jericho is still the oldest inhabited city known to mankind. They say it goes back 8,000 years. I don't know how that could happen, but... (laughs) It's a the Neolithic period. It goes way back, and uh, it's quite a city to see. If you've ever been to Israel, you want to go see there. But in Joshua 6, verse 1, Jericho was tightly shut because the sons of Israel, no one went out, no one came in. And then Adonai starts by giving Joshua a promise in verse 2. The Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand with its king, and the valiant warriors. And notice that Adonai claims Israel's victory over the city of Jericho even before they started fighting. Look at that again. See, I have given Jericho into your hand. Not that I will give or I can give, but I have given. It is done. And it bothers me to realize that we sometimes as believers we may be losing some of our battles along the way. You know, and we think about the promises might not be fulfilled and are not true when we're going through these battles, but we can remind ourselves that we've read the final chapter and we are victorious, that we win, amen? And Yeshua said, I have overcome the world. Don't worry about what the world tells you. We might lose a few battles along the way, but Adonai's already won the war. And as long as we are on his side, we are winners. We're overcomers. We have the victory even now. Can I hear an amen? amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Not only is the battle won by remembering who is command, in command, but the battle is won when we realize, secondly, that Adonai's ways are not our ways, but his ways are always right. So the instructions that Joshua got from Adonai 
about how Jericho would be defeated in chapter 6, verse 3 through 5 must have sounded really strange to him. Look, at, Read along with me. You shall march around the city, all the men of war circling the city once. You shall do so for six days. Also, seven Kohanim shall carry seven shofars of ram's horns before the ark. And then on the seventh day, you shall march around the city seven times, and the Kohanim shall blow the shofars. It shall be that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the shofar, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city will fall down flat, and the people will go up, every man straight ahead. Marching around the city once, each day, for six days, making a lot of noise, with ram's horns, waiting for the walls to collapse. You know, I'm sure that those plans were not in any military manuals of the day. It's probably something that they have never done before or heard about doing. The, importance, the important place that is given to the Ark of the Covenant, the Aron Kodesh, in the march of the Israelites around the city of Jericho, clearly meant that this was not going to be Israel's battle. It is the Lord's battle. They went before him. They were on the sides. They, they were in the flank. They were in behind him, the ark. It points out how important the very presence of Adonai is and how insufficient God's people are without him. And the Israelites, as the people of God, are contributing nothing to the overthrow of the city of Jericho other than walking around the city and blowing their shofars. But what do you think the people of Israel are thinking as they marched around that city day after day? I think they were becoming more and more convinced as they were looking up at the walls that they could not conquer Jericho unless Adonai himself handed it over to him. So Jericho's walls were very high. Its massive stone walls were at least 13 feet in height, and it was backed by a watchtower, which was 28 feet tall, and they were intended to protect the settlement and its water supply from human intruders. So they built this huge wall around it. In fact, it had a row of two other walls uh, behind it. The gates were huge, and they were closed shut. No one was allowed to leave. No one was allowed to enter. And each day, the Israelites circled around the wall. The soldiers went before and followed after the Ark of the Covenant while they said not a word, as seven Kohanim, seven of the priests, continued to blow the seven shofars before the ark in the midst of them. And let's always remember that when we go into battles in our lives, that Adonai's ways are not our ways, but his ways are always right. Amen? And thirdly, the best way to hear from Adonai is to just be quiet. And that's very hard for me to do sometimes. Any of you have that trouble? I know some of you should have your hand up, but I'm not going to name you right now. <laughs> Let's go to verse 10. But Joshua commanded the people, saying, You shall not shout, nor let your voice be heard, nor let a word proceed out of your mouth until the day I tell you, Shout! And then you shall shout. The Israelites are told that they need to stay completely silent until they hear a long blast of the shofar after they encircle the city seven times on the seventh day, and only then would they need to shout. Just be quiet so that you can hear Adonai. Scriptures show us that we hear Adonai's voice best when we stay silent. If you go to Exodus, Shemot 14, verse 14, Moses said, the Lord will fight for you while you keep silent. If you go to Tehim, the book of Psalms in chapter 46, verse 10 and 11, it says it this way. Cease striving and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob 
is our stronghold. Cease striving, stop talking, just be still and know that he is God. You know, when Joshua shared the instructions of Adonai, he didn't mention to them that the walls were going to collapse. After six days of marching around the city, the seventh day finally came. On the other six days, when they marched around the city, they returned back to their camp every day. On the seventh day, though, the Israelites didn't go back to their camp after only one trip around the city. Let's look at verse 15. On the seventh day, they rose early at the dawning of the day. They marched around the city in the same manner seven times. Only on that day, they marched around the city seven times. So they continued marching around the city a second time, then a third time, then a fourth time, and a fifth time, and so on. In fact, I picture that at some point, the front line of the people overlapped with the people that were before them. You know, when we do our prayer marches here, we, we pray and we go around the building. Uh, we do it seven times, you know, seven circuits. And I usually start up, and I always end up catching up to somebody and starting to pass them up, so I know what that's like. But here, if you think about it, there's probably not just one line of people or two or three. The city was probably surrounded by Israelites on every side, a few hundreds deep. Remember, we're talking about thousands of Israelite men, according to the second census, which they just had. Thousands and thousands. So remember, the best way to get your victory is to be quiet and be still and listen for Adonai's word to be revealed to you. And then his battle plan for you next is that victory is yours only if you do not quit. Joshua 6, verse 16. At the seventh time, when the Kohanim blew the shofars, Joshua said to the people, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. And then in verse 20, So the people shouted, and the Kohanim blew the shofars. And when people heard the sound of the shofar, the people shouted with a great shout. The wall fell down flat. So the people went up into the city, every man straight ahead, and they took the city. And I want us all to look together at Hebrews 11, verse 30. There it says, By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they had been encircled for seven days. So what is it that honors Adonai and pleases him the most? The thing that honors Adonai and pleases him the most is our obedience. You know, Shmuel, Samuel, tells us in 1 Samuel 15, verse 22, has the Lord as much delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to heed than the fat of rams. So if you look back at this story, you'll see that Joshua did not tell the Israelites how many times they were going to be required to march around the city or what the result of their marching would be. I think that most people don't see the answers to their prayers simply because they may have stopped one circuit or one circle short in their battle of their own personal Jericho. We might have been doing the right things, but we might simply stop short of doing them, get tired of receiving the victory. It's like running a 100 yards on a football field and getting to the two-yard line and getting tired. You don't go in for the touchdown. You know, I used to think about it as someone who was swimming across the lake and they got more than halfway across the lake and they got tired and said, man, I'm going back. Sometimes we just have to persevere, right? Press on toward that goal to which he's called us. And then lastly, the last thing is that remember that a day of judgment is coming. Joshua 6, 
verse 20 through 21. So the people shouted, and the Kohanim blew the shofars. And when the people heard the sound of the shofars, the people shouted with a great shout, and the wall fell down flat. So that the people went up into the city, every man straight ahead, and they took the city. They utterly destroyed everything in the city, both man and woman, young and old, and ox and sheep and donkey, with the edge of the sword. You know, the command given in verse 17, and then carried out here in verse 21, that everyone and everything dies and is destroyed is kind of scary. Until we remember that, you know, Jericho had been given plenty of time to repent and to turn from their evil ways. The Canaanites sacrificed children to their false god, Molech. They use the sexual perversion of prostitutes in the worship of Ashtoreth. And they practice magic and occult and sorcery. And thinking about this, I think people of America wake up. Just as with Jericho, America seems to be in the crosshairs of Adonai's judgment. You know, the people of Jericho were given the same chances as Rahab and her family. And they still refuse to change their ways. You might not ever have thought about all that, but they had four decades to repent. Just as Adonai promised. When Jonah only gave them 40 days in Nineveh, the Canaanites had been given exactly 40 years as the Israelites wander in the wilderness to turn from their wicked ways and to accept and worship the one true God. But now after years of wickedness, the time of judgment had come. And that same judgment will come for all unbelievers today. Rav Shaul warns them in 2 Peter, chapter 3, verse 8 through 10. But do not let this one fact escape your notice. Beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years and a thousand years like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, in which the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the elements will be destroyed with intense heat, and the earth and its works will be burned up. You've all read that scripture verse before, right? Are you fighting a battle this Shabbat? Many of us are. <clears throat> I believe the, to guarantee your victory, you need to just remember these five battle plans. First, your battle is won by remembering who is in charge. Adonai, the Most High God. Two, Adonai's ways are not our ways because his ways are always right. and We are most of the time wrong. Three, the best way to hear Adonai is just be quiet, be still, and know that he is God. Four, the victory is yours if you just don't give up. And five, Remember, the day of judgment is coming. Now, there's one last thing, a very interesting thing that I see about the shofarot, about the shofars that are blown here in Jericho. These shofarot that these kohanim or the priests were blowing were not to announce a battle. They were not to call to assembly. They were not to call in the king. They were the same shofarot that were used for worship in the presence of the Lord. These were the trumpets of victory, the trumpets of praise, where it says, send Judah first, let the praise go before the ark and the presence of the Lord. And remember that at that time, that these shofars of victory started to blow, all the walls of Jericho were still standing. The shouts that went up were a hallelujah! 
The shouts went up not because the victory has been won, but the shouts went up because the Israelites understood that the battle was not in their hands. It was in the Lord's. Their praising started not because he had fulfilled the promise, but the praises went up because Adonai had just spoken the promise, and that was enough. And his word shall never come back void. The praises went up because no matter how bad things may look from the outside looking in, God had already ordered their steps, and he had shown them that all the promises of God are yes and amen. Say that with me. Yes and amen. And as the shouts of praise went up, the walls came tumbling down. Hallelujah. Listen, the walls in your life may still be standing. Situations during this past year and what's coming up into the new year might still look a little too tough to handle from the outside looking in. But I challenge you today to trust Adonai enough to have a hallelujah shout of victory anyways. You know, I challenge you to shout now like you have already taken the city. And I challenge you to start praising Adonai Most High like the battle that you are going through has already been won according to his plan and promises for you. You don't have to wait for the battle to be over. You can shout even now. Can I hear a hallelujah? So I'm going to ask the musician and the shofar warriors to come and take their position on the flank. I'm going to ask you all to please stand. Do you have a battle today that you seem to be going through? That sometimes it seems like you're going through it yourself. You don't see answers or you're not hearing the Lord's voice. Well, then you need to take a victory lap today. Before the verdict is in, before the score is tallied, before the final report is diagnosed, before the evidence is realized, if you need to, whatever battle you're going through, know that the battle has been won because the Lord's promises for our you are yes and amen, then come forward at this time because we are going to sing and we are going to shout together this victory. And if you come forward, please just keep a six-foot distance. Come forward. If you need some walls in your life to come down today, then join me in this victory song. We are going to sing, This is How We Fight Our Battles. And when you hear the sound of the shofar blasting, shout hallelujah and praise the Lord. And I'm believing that your walls are going to come tumbling down today. Amen. Let Judah go first. Send the praise first before whatever it is you're going through. And trust him in his promises that the walls are coming, tumbling down.
fight my battles. And this is how I fight my battles. And this is how I fight my battles. This is how. him up on behalf of us all. Is it possible that having giving us his son, he would not giving us give us everything else also? So who will bring a charge against God's chosen people? Certainly not God. He is the one who causes them to be considered righteous. Who punishes them? Certainly not the Messiah Yeshua, who died and more than that has been raised and is at the right hand of the Father even now and is actually pleading on our behalf. Who will separate us from the love of Messiah? Trouble? Will hardship? Persecution? Hunger? Poverty? Danger? War? As the Tanakh puts it, for your sake, we are being put to death all day long. We are considered sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through the one who has loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor other heavenly rulers, neither what exists nor what is coming, neither powers above nor powers below, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of Adonai which comes to us through the Messiah, Yeshua, our Lord and our Savior. Do not fear. Do not be dismayed. The righteous right hand of the Lord will uphold you. He is with you. 
He will fight your battle with you. You have already won. The walls are down already. You just don't realize them. His word is true. It shall not come back void. All of his words are yes and amen. Believe the Lord for miracles in your life because this 2020 is going to be a very eventful year. And don't hold it against me when I said that about last year, this year here. We can attest to the fact, though, that we are soon coming upon the time of judgment, upon this world, time of tribulation, Daniel's 70th week, the time of Jacob's troubles for Israel, and the day of the Lord will certainly come as a thief in the night. So prepare yourself. Bring in the harvest now. Tell somebody about Yeshua. Time is getting late. Secure your victory now and follow Adonai's battle plan because he has already won the victory. Amen? So we are going to let the, our walls come down once and for all. After you hear the shofar, shout with me. Give a sound of praise to the Lord. Whatever you got in you, let it go. Amen? And let's take the city. Hallelujah. fight our battles. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for appointing us and anointing us for such a time as this. To bring about your transformation, your revival, your great harvest in the fields, Lord. And we ask that the walls in our lives, we know that if you brought us to it, you'll bring us through it. And they will fall down and we will go in just like you said. Let our praise go before you in all things. Amen. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to recite the priestly blessing, the Berkat Kohanim, over you. Because he has called us all to be a royal priesthood, a chosen generation, a holy nation, a peculiar people. Is that you? Amen. I know you are. We have been called out of darkness into his marvelous light. Let your light so shine before men that they may see Yeshua revealed and that they may come to salvation. Just raise your hands to heaven. And as I release this blessing on you, may you go forth and release the blessing out into the mission field when we leave here. Amen. Ya er Adonai panavalecha vichulecha Isa Adonai panavalecha Yisem lecha shalom The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you perfect peace. Bashem Yeshua HaMashiach, in the name of Yeshua, our Messiah, our Sar Shalom, our Prince of Peace, and you all say, Amen, Amen. Amen.